is my picture. In fact, it, it was my idea that pulled together some different elements and my friend Brendan, who lives in Wainoni, who's a graphic artist, uh, he whipped this up for me. It used to take me an hour to draw this on a piece of paper before every workshop. And all of a sudden I was doing five, six, seven workshops a week and I thought, I can innovate, I can do things better. Brendan, I need a picture. So he drew me a picture. And now I go to warehouse stationery and I print them off 10 at a time and they cost me something like 50 bucks, which is a good improvement of my process. There you go. Now the idea with this uh, is that there are five elements. There is the element here at the start of our journey as we look out to the horizon. And this is where we are today, knowing that we've got this whatever history backstory that brings us up to today. Then we've got this golden cloud, which is a vision, a vision for our school community, um, which is on the horizon. And the length of that horizon really depends on the purpose. So if it was, uh, if we're looking at infrastructure build for Hayata, which was, is the new school uh, going into Aranui, the new campus. When we did our initial visioning work, we were looking out three years. So that was a three year time frame. Um, if it was a tuck shop, what are we going to do with our healthy food? It might be, what can we do in a term? What could we really do in 12 weeks, 10 weeks plus the holidays? So that's element two. Element three is this context on the, red hand, uh, on the left hand side, which is red because that's where the barriers, the potential inhibitors and risks involved in the project live. And on the right hand side, the green, is where the enablers and the supports uh, and the resources that we have access to in our school community, they will live over here. What do you think the path is? People. Yes, people. Giving you a time frame. It's where we are now. It's the plan. The path is the plan. And it's a plan and it's implementing that plan that's always the hardest. Writing plans, easy. <laughs> Bring people together, multi-stakeholder gathering, yay, here's a plan. Then someone has to make it work. So the path is the plan. Does that make sense? It's kind of just, it's really simplistic. I had an exercise like this with um, the senior management team of SCIRT, which is the big infrastructure alliance that's working primarily in greater, uh, mostly Christchurch. Um, at the same time that I'm doing it with some year five and six kids, down lying on my tummy with them around in a big circle and we went through this. Quite a contrast in terms of purpose, but the same process. Just an easy way to frame up uh, something that is highly complex. And yes, it involves people, and that's part of what makes it complex. If you consider what I just shared there about these five elements, um, are there any processes that you've used in the past in management and teaching that you kind of relate to these elements? So what's happened in our backstory, what's brought us to today, what's this vision out here, what are the risks, barriers, inhibitors, what are the enablers, the opportunities, the resources? Is there anything in your world that that connects with? Maybe a SWOT analysis. So SWOT analysis are these two sides: strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. This is your visioning process. Mm. This is your appreciative inquiry. And this is your strategic or operational planning process. 
and the stronger and the more people have been involved in the visioning process, the fewer issues there are in the red zone. We won't call it the red zone, shall we? <laughs> Could we call it something else? Okay. <laughs> On the risk side. Yeah. yeah. On the red side. <laughs> yeah. Because you might end up working with schools related to sure. that, that piece of land. Yeah, that's a very good and I have, and I think, don't call it that! Yeah, true. So what it neatly does is, and this is something that when we move to our community of practice, uh, which is in four weeks' time, we've got two days that we're bookending, we will, I, I want to step through this process with each of the schools involved in it, the community of practice, mm -hmm. along with the next bit, which is the detailed stakeholder mapping um, exercise. Cool, so you get that. That's all. So what I'm going to share with you now uh, is a very fast walk through a journey that I had with South Hornby Primary School. And it was, uh, the purpose of the engagement was to inform master planning. So uh, if, you're not a familiar, if you're not aware or familiar with South Hornby's situation, uh, they were proposed to move the school from where it is on Shan's Springs Road. Springs Road, um, to move from that site onto the grounds of Branston Intermediate, which had shifted into Hornby High School. Knowing that Sockburn School, just over there, is going into Wigram Skies. So that's yet to happen. So notice that there are a number of pieces moving around the education game board. So that was the purpose. Is this familiar in any way to anything you've seen today? Yeah, it's a little bit like that picture. Uh, and there was something in the cultural narrative that was developed um, Oh, what's our Marae? Te uh, Taumutu. Taumutu. And it was about the, uh, the braided rivers of Canterbury and how braided rivers are different every second of their existence. There is always something shifting, there is something moving, it is, it's dynamic and fluid. And the, the school leadership said actually we, we like the idea of a braided river metaphor that we can go out to our community and say well we've got all of these stakeholder groups that we know and what we're trying to do is bring them together in a dialogue or discourse that can inform master planning so that at some point out in the river we're all we've got it together and probably a government official will cut a, a ribbon mm -hmm. out here on this horizon. Recognising. Going to put a dam on it. <laughs> I didn't say that. Moving right along. <laughs> and that we've got this context, which is uh, it's not all clear and even and smooth. There are hills and just as a part of the metaphor. And so what uh, the school leadership identified was that uh, one of these streams um, was the local iwi and runanga at um, Te Taumutu, who had crafted, co-created a cultural narrative, beautiful document, that there was the school, senior management team, staff and board of trustees, there were the children's voices, there were the early childhood providers, because I think there were six early childhood providers that fed into that school and if you're moving geographically there are a number of issues there including the majority of the school walking or scooting to to school parents caregivers and family members and other community organizations and stakeholders so this is a picture just representing that intent to bring together all of those voices now, Roz, your question about vision. Sometimes there is a top-down driven vision. 
this vision, which you can't really make out, uh, is the vision that was built up within the school by the children and the parents. And that's the vision that set the direction. So if you consider, well, what is the vision out there on the horizon? They had a very clear vision. Thanks, Janelle. So in terms of uh, those different elements of the stream, that's the cover of the, uh, the cultural narrative. And these are the design principles. And I think Mel, before she left earlier on, she talked about a process which probably starts with design principles.